up. No, once you get them talking, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, we will shut me up. What? <laughs> 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 I don't want to. Sh- I don't want to shut you up. I don't want to do. I don't want to do all the talking. <laughs> no, you won't be able to shut them up. <laughs> yeah, just don't get them started on politics or anything oh, no. like that. Right. No politics. <laughs> just start. That's how I'm going to end the podcast. I'm going to say, "What do you think of those liberals?" Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. no <laughs> <right? don't>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'll leave you guys. If you have any technical issues, just uh, give let me, me a know. Holler. Give yeah. me a holler. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks. Have fun. Thanks, Keith. Thank you. Yeah, we don't have any like crazy hard start or anything like that. I just, I just want to have a conversation about your work, Andrew. I mean, you and I met, I think we met two years ago at the Stampede, but I had known of your work um, because uh, Terry Isaac was a good friend of mine as well. And I I think, I think he was the one that first pointed me to you and then I was familiar with your work and then I met you at Stampede two years ago. You knew Terry as well, quite well, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I've known Terry for, well, I did know Terry uh, Terry for over 30 years, so. Wow. Yeah, we've done, you know, I did a lot of shows in the States as well during the wildlife era. Mm -hmm. And and so I was with him in a lot of those different shows and, he was such a nice and giving man. It uh, it really was a, a an inspiration to have him, uh, you know, spread your work around your name, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was am- he was amazing. I first met him, I think in was it 2020, 2003. I went to do uh, like a workshop with him, and I just yeah. brought this I brought this crappy little elephant with me. But he kind of, he saw it and he liked it and he held it up. And I always remember, you know how he'd, he would always say that he gets goosebumps yeah. when, when something inspired him and he said, oh, right. I get goosebumps from this. And like, it was such an honor for him to say that. And uh, yeah, so I asked if I could train with him and he didn't have anything official, but you know, he and I, we spoke back and forth a lot about my work and I would drive out there and he would pick some stuff apart and tell me some stuff was great. And yeah, he was an amazing man. Yeah, yeah. He was at that. And uh, like I said, that was during the wildlife era, which I did for about 12 years. Right. Met a lot of different artists uh, during that time as well. So it was really a great time. Mm -hmm. And it still is, actually. So when you say the wildlife era, um, I mean, I know you're talking about like sort of the... I don't know, like all of the the animals and the the. Yeah. You're talking about sort of more of a a general thing, like when when Bateman and the Prince were all going crazy and everything oh, else, right? Yeah. Well, I started out as a landscape artist, so I did that for quite a few years, mm-hmm. and then I started switching into wildlife, and that just didn't have much, too much to do with Bateman or any of these people. It's just the direction I took. Right. And. Um, you know, it got me to a lot of different places uh, to do um, photo safaris and, and check out material for compositions. And uh, so that's basically the time that I started to do a lot of shows in the U.S. And they were predominantly, of course, wildlife shows. Mm-hmm. Everywhere from Seattle to North Carolina, all over the place that uh, we met as big groups, you know, 100, 115 wildlife artists at the show. So it was really a, a kind of a wild time. <laughs> but right. eventually that uh, window started to close a bit and print sales weren't as as uh, great as they used to be. You know, mm-hmm. there was a time where you could uh, do a, a run of limited editions of Wolves and every one of them would sell out in no time flat. Wow. Yeah, and then so after 12 years, um, I noticed that my landscapes again were taking over instead of focusing more on the wildlife it was start to focus more on the on the landscape aspect of it mm-hmm. and eventually actually it was Lynn and my wife and Rita who told me that you know you, you're gonna have to get out of the print market because it's it's collapsing right and I sort of thought well you know that may not be a great idea because we a lot of our income was from that part of it from selling prints mm-hmm. but I went with it and uh, we actually had a few a few hundred uh, prints left over that I took to a broker and got rid of them. Mm-hmm. And I went totally or originals. And to my surprise, and mm-hmm. 
it actually skyrocketed the work. The originals started to sell wow. a lot better and it didn't have to do as much work for them as you do, you know, doing prints. Mm -hmm. and run the prints, uh, you know, sign them all, frame them all. So it was a lot of yeah. were a very little return. Right. But it did get the name out there. And uh, I was involved a lot with um, Ducks Unlimited, BC Wildlife Federation, a lot of conservation organizations that use those prints to raise funds. Mm -hmm. So that was a great part of it. And to me, the really great part of it was the fact that I met so many different artists from all over the world that were in the same genre of work as I was. Right. And then when I went to originals and landscapes, I uh, sort of lost touch with a lot of them. And I see they're still doing a lot of wildlife, but <laughs> I, I have a few I've done with, you know, smaller animals in them, but the predominant theme is the landscape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's been interesting. Yeah. And when you moved, when you moved from wildlife to, uh, to landscapes, that was more of uh, a demand thing that you were seeing? People were buying the landscapes? I, not so much. I, I think it was more of a, it, the realization that the print market was collapsing. You know, it I just see. wasn't doing as much as it uh, did in the past. So okay. in order to keep the work um, out there and uh, going back to originals, it gave you a greater satisfaction when people would spend a, a lot of money on a piece of work that you've created. Right. And, you know, it, um, it really is a compliment. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so it was, it was a little bit more of the, um, uh, the change in the print sales and stuff like that that actually moved you towards yeah. landscapes and originals and stuff like that. Yeah, to a certain extent. I, I yeah. think I was sort of also getting a little bit tired of, you know, doing animals. And, uh, <laughs> you can only do them in so many different positions, right? <laughs> right, right. So it was more of maybe using, having half a dozen wolf um, images, but the background's always changed. Mm -hmm. uh, so it it um, the landscape just held me a lot more and, and uh, did a lot more hiking and, and out in the wilds and getting inspiration for compositions and reference yeah. material. Yeah, so, I was, yeah, I was going to yeah. ask you about that. So a lot of your a lot of your landscapes and stuff like that are based on you know places that you hike up to and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, we you know with the with the wildlife it was it was afforded me the ability to go to Africa and spend three and a half weeks there and uh, did a lot of, uh, you know, picture taking and for reference material. Yeah. And when we did the, uh, some of the wildlife pieces from Africa, found that really uh, most of the sales were in the U.S. for it. In Canada, it wasn't, it was a little bit harder, harder to sell. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, it was. It really was. And going back to those years, uh, we, I also noticed that Americans, American artists, had a lot more vibrant colors in their in their compositions. Mm -hmm. They were really, and as far as Canadian artists went at that time, but going back 30 years ago, um, there were a lot more muted colors. And I think really the the work and compositions and everything really reflect the artist's personality. Mm -hmm. So as Canadians, we were a little more laid back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> a little more you muted. Say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so true. It's so true. You know, it's interesting um, that you were that you said that about Africa and them not selling as much. Um, I had done kind of the same thing as you. I took a trip to Africa a few mm -hmm. years ago um, with the intention of doing a bunch of wildlife art, but I found that yeah. the Canadian stuff was what really engaged with everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, like I said, we had no problem in the U.S. selling. When I was there, I met mostly Europeans and, and Americans. Never really came across any Canadians on any of the safaris that I was on. Yeah, really yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of really big um, photographers that um, are from the U.K. that I'm that I follow. They're oh, yeah. Afri they're African wildlife photographers, yeah. and yeah, they're huge in the U.S. and nowhere else. Yeah, really? yeah, exactly. Yeah, very well, interesting. I, I, yeah, when we were in the States, we did the Safari Club show as well, which, of course, was most to do with um, hunts and, and conservation. And a lot of companies from Africa and all over the world would set up and sign up people for hunting or for fishing. And there we really noticed the, uh, the, the work, the African art that some of the guys were producing it just went crazy. And... Uh, 
you really had to know regionally what images and what animals sold in certain areas like you know like in south carolina or were so totally different than something in washington wow so, yeah so you sort of had to pick your work when you were doing those shows as to what images you would be taking to them it was really quite interesting yeah that that is really interesting yeah because i think most artists would just assume that the, the popularity of something would would just go wherever you went but different different states different provinces different yep. popularity totally yeah. yeah yeah even even just going from here to ontario a lot of the a lot of the images were quite different that mm. you took to them as far as um, people being able to engage with what they're seeing and right. what i noticed out here when we're doing shows here and of course the bulk of my work now is from landscapes from around kanaskas banff jasper places like that mm -hmm. and i find the people that really um have a lot of interest in it and do purchase are people that can relate to the image only maybe because they were had a picnic or their family in mm -hmm. certain places or hiked in certain places and that's what draws them is that they can identify with the with the scene or with whatever they've seen out in the out in the wilds right yeah that's so true so do you um, like you said, most of your the work that you do is in Kananaskis and around around there. Um, yeah. If you're doing a show in Ontario or BC, do you do you change at all what you're showing and show maybe show some like native BC stuff or anything or? Um, well, a little bit. No, I'm not too concerned too much about it. I, in right. Ontario, it uh, what I did probably about half a dozen shows out there over the years, and taking uh, Western mountain scenes was not exactly as popular as doing stuff from Ontario area or even right. Quebec, and uh, totally a different, um, different way of painting uh, landscapes. So it, uh, with, with BC, it's not too bad. It's not much of a change there because they right. have, certainly have the coastal mountains. Uh, but there again, doing the coastal mountains versus the uh, Rockies, the atmosphere, the, the te texture, the light, everything is so different. Mm -hmm. So you kind of uh, adjust to it in, in, in compositions. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm still, I'm still plugging away with mostly um, animals, which I guess helps a little bit um, in that uh, I don't have to worry too much about where I'm going. But I was wondering that, especially with landscapes and you saying like people identifying with a certain scene or whatever, you know, if, if they see, you know, a lake and a mountain, they're like, oh, that's, you know, Mount whatever, right? Yeah. That, that does engage them to, you know, think I'd like to hang that on my wall. Well, certainly. Yeah. 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 And, that's... and by the way, your work is, is pretty spectacular too. The, oh, the, thank you. It's incredible. And the uh, first time I saw it, I said, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit way over the top as far as uh, how good it is. So oh, that's excellent. very kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still I'm still very early in my in my journey, and so I'm still oh, I'm still, um well professionally full time for four years now. Uh huh. But um, I mean, I've been painting for most of my life, and then Terry started tutoring me probably about fifteen years ago. Okay. Yeah. So just a slow climb, right? Yeah. 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 And I no, mean, I've been I've been doing it for 51 years. <laughs> wow. Wow. And professionally, probably about oh, 28, I guess, maybe 28 okay. years. So you started, time. you started, you started like when you were young and you've always just loved it. Well, actually I started when I was 22. Um, oh, okay. But a little backup on that is that yeah. as a kid, I've always drawn and doodled and, and did, even did a lot of stuff in, uh, in school as far as the art part of it goes. Um, but in high school, I got kicked out of the uh, art classes because I wouldn't do what they wanted me to do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sort really? of tangent. And uh -huh. we weren't following, you know, the, the uh, cookie cutter type of art. So I have spent a lot of time out in the hallway during art classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who gets the last laugh, right? Right, Exa exactly. So they were trying to sort of force you down uh, just a different type of art that was of any yeah. interest to you. Yeah, depending on who your instructor was, you know, you sort of tried to have to follow their um, route that they wanted to go as far as the 
production of images or compositions or color. Right. And I was more into doing my own thing, so that didn't go over too well. Do you, remember, do you remember what you were doing back then? Oh, man. Well, we're doing, uh, doing a lot of drawings. Uh, a okay. lot of stuff, like, even in, in social studies, history, stuff like that. We used to do a lot of what they call timelines, where you'd have a roll of parchment paper roll out, and you had certain sections of each of years that right. you would do the historical drawings and stuff like that on it. So it, it, uh, it gave me a lot of uh, leeway to practice my drawing, uh, which oh, is... So cool pretty important to as a basis for for you know a lot of painting oh, yeah. for realis for realism anyhow mm -hmm. i find now uh the the drawings that i do are primarily for if i'm doing small birds or something a little more intricate i'll put a good drawing on the canvas mm -hmm. but as well as the landscape school is just basically a few pencil lines here and there is where i want the uh focus to be well with the composition to to look like and then just the way you go with the with the paintbrush yeah and how what process do you use for your work it's it's uh, amazing oh thank you i'm i probably take more of a i got my i have a background in photography and i th and okay. i think that i think that that has probably influenced a lot of my work um in that they it looks sort of like a phot like photographic yeah, yeah. and um yeah, I think that probably what inspired me was, I've, I've, I was talking about this to someone just the other day. I just get really, for me, if I'm scrolling through the internet and I'm just looking at art and just, you know, just enjoying other people's work and stuff like that, um, you know, I can see, you know, work like yours and, and Terry's and Robert's and, you know, all, all, you know, all of these amazing colorful yeah. landscapes and stuff like that. But what's always sort of drawn me was um, really high contrast, um, black and white, sort of moody, misty, um, yeah. And, yeah. and it was usually photography. And so um, for the longest time, I, that kind of drew me in that way. And um, I tried to do a little bit more of like, you know, like your work and, you know, trying to do, um, you know, like colorful landscapes and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, it, I just kept going back to the black and white stuff. So one day I just said to myself, well, why can't I do this? but just paint it because that's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I went out and actually that's when I went out and saw Terry and I'm like, Terry, this is what I want to do. Um, it's not like everyone else's. And, you know, I, I think I might be making a mistake. And he was so encouraging. He said, absolutely not. Like this will, this will define your work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, absolutely. yeah. So it was a real like watershed moment for me. And um, I just went back. I think I needed permission almost from 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 another artist like terry someone that i respected yeah, yeah. That th this was okay to do because it is so different yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well that's one thing too you know over the years you kind of have to develop a thick skin for for people's uh, criticism of the yeah world. Mm -hmm. yeah i know for many years uh well when i was doing the wildlife stuff uh there was always people would come along and say oh that looks like a bateman uh, no, oh. that's a kiss. What's the matter with you? <laughs> but actually, you know, I've I've had a couple of shows with uh, with Bob Bateman and two in different places, so it's mm -hmm. uh, it's it was interesting. But uh, no, you're trying to develop your own style. Yeah. And fortunately, now after having switched back to uh, to the landscapes and small birds and still lives, um, people start to recognize the work without having to know who did it right off the bat. Right. They don't have yeah. to read your signature. They know they know who it is, and yeah. that's what you're trying to accomplish as an artist: is to develop a style that is unique, that's different. Mm -hmm. And the same with you. That's that's what you've done. Right. Um, that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. Don't, I don't get too much, which is really really nice. I, I don't get too much criticism anymore. And uh, mm -hmm. artists that are starting out, it's tough because, you know, if they criticism, they take to heart if it's bad, and mm -hmm. they they ignore the 10 12 other good good things people have said and it always nags the one that didn't say anything that was that was positive yeah um, so it, it is a, a different kind of um, different kind of uh, way to go down the road of having a having a, a um, job that uh, people can openly criticize everything that you it's, do. <laughs> yeah it sure is you know yeah. i remember um I, I i got asked if i would uh put up some of my work. This is when uh, some of my prints 
they asked uh -huh. if I would uh, if I would bring them to this this charity auction, and oh, so yeah. there was three of them there, and this was very early in in when I did my work, and then um, so I went I went to the the charity auction, but anonymously, and I wandered around, um, you know, looking at all of the other auction items and stuff like that, and and I realized there was an opportunity for me I could overhear people talking about my work without me standing there. Yeah. And that was really eye opening. I mean, once again, there was some really nice stuff and then there was some not so really nice stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting to hear um, when people are unfiltered, when you're not there and they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's a bad one that sticks in your mind. <laughs> I know. I know it is right. It's always that. Mm -hmm. one. Yeah. 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 I mean, when I look at your work now, like I'll just bring this up on, on the screen here, but um, yeah, I've never, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's evolved and evolved and evolved over the years, but when, yeah, I, totally. when I see your work, I instantly know um, that it's yours. Yeah. 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 Like there's, yeah, there's never a question. Um, so most of the stuff here, uh, so what I've got the page up on right now is like, uh, your available originals. And I, yeah. I love some of the, like the wildflower stuff that you've done, like this, like the hibiscus and the white hibiscus. They're, they're yeah, amazing. Those, yeah, those were from uh, Hawaii, from Maui. Those wow. are just some of the tropical, tropical flowers are pretty amazing. Yeah. And, you know, moved a little more into some of, you know, like petunias and flowers like that as well. But on mm -hmm. a large scale, so you get a large canvas and you put, say, just one flower on it, it really has quite an impact. Yeah, but it, it they're, sure they're does. They're fun to do. They're fun to do. Yeah, I, I love, I love like in some of the in some of your work, like this one, like the way that you use light, like you can yeah. see on the top on the top here that the you know the sun is obviously hitting this portion, and then this little this little white piece here where the sun is catching it and. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It, it's got to have the light and and the proper light source, and and it just gives you that three D body to the to the to the image. Yeah, and uh, it it looks rich. If you yeah. don't have that light source, everything kind of goes flat. It doesn't have a real impact. So yeah. I always pretty well every piece I really pay attention, particular attention to the light source. Right. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. like even even in even in the white ones, the same thing, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, like the shadows and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah, beautiful. And so I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you too, um, maybe to talk a little bit about, well, actually, before I get into like the little reminders piece, um, Ooh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about like, um, uh, you know, how COVID has affected you. Because is the little reminders sort of a reaction to it is. Yeah, yeah. So maybe let's talk a little bit about COVID. And I mean, I, you know, I know the stampede got canceled, which you and I yep. were both going to be in. But yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so how how have things been going for you um, as far as all of that goes? Actually, not not too bad at all. You know, mm -hmm. as far as the stampede went, I've been doing it for what over twenty years, and uh, the first two weeks of July were always spent uh, indoors. Mm -hmm. So this year, having to adjust to that was kind of interesting, and it enabled me to do a lot more other stuff. Um, so the COVID didn't really affect me that badly because we're basically by myself uh, painting at the studio. Right. And so you're, you're self-isolating anyhow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The only, the only thing, maybe once a week, I want to go out to the grocery store. That was about it. Right. And so that didn't bother me at all. Um, what bothered me more, I think, was the fact that uh, you weren't able to, of course, do everything that you like, even go out on a hike or get out and meet friends or whatever. Right. And I think that was a big disappointment of Stampede being canceled, is the fact that uh, you haven't been able to say hi to artists and friends that you haven't seen for over a year or longer. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it, it is that way and, and you have to adjust. So now we're reaching with clients. Um, we've been doing more of the stuff um, online with Rita doing the, uh, the marketing part of it and putting all the stuff on, on uh, the um, website. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, doing a lot more legwork and trying to drive people to the, to the website and to the work. Right. And while the, the galleries, of course, they were closed for about three months. So there was certainly nothing com coming out of them. Mm -hmm. um, but since they reopened here now, pretty well all of them, I think I deal with about seven or eight of them, 
and uh, things have started to pick up. Um, but also just emailing clients and putting your images on on Facebook and just to keep in touch with what you're doing. Right. Uh, we got a lot of feedback from every time we posted some new image or something on the on the, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it it really um, that's her part of it, and uh, mine is just to follow along and do as I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so, Rita, your daughter. How long has she been doing the the marketing and all of that for you? Uh, really, uh, seriously, probably about fifteen years. But we've been working together probably for about thirty. Wow. Um, with her and uh, with my son Lee, we used mm -hmm. to do a lot. Like I say, a lot of shows in the U.S. So they would go with me, mm -hmm. and so they got the experience about um, doing shows and and picking up uh, pointers on marketing and all that stuff. And yeah. it's worked out quite well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's such a great way of dividing and conquering, right? Because you really can concentrate on your work, which is what yeah. you should be concentrating on. You shouldn't exactly. you know, be posting yeah. to Facebook every two hours and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not that tech savvy. I can do certain things. <laughs> do, you tell, do, do you tell them that you're the talent? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and if you look at it, that's one of the downfalls, I think, of a lot of um, some of the artists that they're, they're not tech savvy and they don't feel that they have enough time to update their websites. Or I've mm -hmm. seen artists with websites that haven't been updated for five years. And, right, you know, right. and then they wonder why, they, why nothing comes to them. Well, you have to keep on top of it all the time. Yeah. And, that's what I, like I said, that's what Rita does. She's on it every day and uh, we update all constantly. Yeah, yeah. it's, it is so important. And, and I'm, we're going to have Rita on, on a different podcast and talk a little bit about some of the details of that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's such a, it, it, it really is very symbiotic, right? Like yeah. I still do most of my own marketing just because I'm still so new, you know, yeah. selling professionally. So, yeah. I mean, it, it does take a lot of time, but um yeah, if you do it right, uh, it really does. It really does work. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, and so the little reminders, as far as going back to the virus, basically that was yeah. not you know not out hiking and doing stuff like that, and uh, so it was just little snippets of landscape of, of uh, places that you've been to or that people can recognize, and uh, we put them on the market. Um, for a special price, and then any of the money that we raised, uh, we raised it to uh, give to a food bank or you know places oh, wow. like that as part of the part of the uh, sales. Oh wow, and that's incredible! They were really interesting to work on too because they're like seven by nine inch, so it's just yeah. a small canvas, and yeah, you're girl. putting in the, you're putting in a landscape that is huge. And after working on large canvases all the time it was interesting to switch to such a small format mm -hmm. um, it um it it really runs in in a way that if i'm doing small stuff i can go with it for a long time but if and then i will go back to larger canvases and it's hard to adjust back to small ones again because mm -hmm. you're able to do a lot more on a large canvas uh, uh, you know grandiose compositions and, <laughs> yeah uh, but they, they were fun to work on yeah really yeah fun. Yeah, I've got them up on screen here, and I'll just kind of scroll through them. But yeah, there are what a great idea too, right? Especially when, um, you know, with with COVID, you know, obviously financially yeah. things are different are difficult for everyone, right? And yeah. you know, something like this, um, you said they're seven by nine, right? Yeah, seven by nine. They're a little more affordable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're more affordable, and for someone that has always wanted to own a piece of your art, um, you know, this this is a way that they can step in and you know get their first piece and exactly yeah yeah, yeah you, if you get them to buy the first piece then you got them for a while <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so we have yeah we have a lot of return clients so which is pretty gratifying you know? oh interesting yeah and, so, and by the way the uh, you're talking about the black and whites um i did paint in black and white uh we did a series we did a series of um little um birds Mm -hmm. with the background and the plant all being painted in black and white, but the bird was in color. Right. And did a series of about 10 of those, and then I did 10 of, with butterflies. So all these butterflies right. and different plants were all 
you know, the plants were all black and white in the background, but the, the butterfly was in full color. And they were really, really popular. That was, and it was fun to work on. You know? do, you, do you remember when that was? Well, I think probably about three, four years ago, I did the, um, did the butterflies. And oh, wow. uh, I actually just finished two of them um, that we um, sent to a gallery in Invermere. And, and uh, yeah, they're small. They're like 11 by 14, so they're nothing huge. Right. But those two little ones uh, sold right off the bat. So, oh, that's so good. So are you yeah. maybe on your yeah. website at all? Do you know? Or I'm not, it should be on the one of, Oops. or if you look on Invermere on the gallery. Oh, okay. These on Artem Gallery. Okay. Okay. And you click on there and, and you go to the paintings. Okay. Yeah. And then your name should come up under there, right about. It's got a little stream landscape for Kiss. Oh, I see you. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Oh, I that is it. really cool. Yeah. Oh, that so is there's... really neat. Yeah, it's really, really uh, fun to work on. And, and, you know, I presume with you, too, I really have to watch the values when you're doing it. Right. <laughs> it's all values, right? Oh, yeah. You really have to <laughs> yeah. pay attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm not, uh, I, I don't do any teaching or anything like that yet. And um, I mean, that would really be the only thing that I would have to to offer, right? I wouldn't be doing yeah. a lot of color theory or anything, but, um, yeah. you know, values are so important. Um, oh, yeah. that, you know, if, if I do get there at some point, then, yeah, that would be, uh, do you do you t ever teach, Andrew? Yeah, I not a whole bunch. Uh, you know, it's mostly maybe a couple workshops a year. Right. And we do it either ourselves here in Calgary or we do it with a gallery mm -hmm. and uh, generally take on 10, usually 10 students and we do it for a couple of days. And, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it actually quite a bit of fun, but it sure takes a lot out of you when you're, when you're teaching. And, oh yeah. Uh, and I can't, some of the guys that do it constantly, oh, it, it's amazing. I I wouldn't be able to do it full time, <laughs> but no. it's, it, really interesting to to get a group of people together that are absolute starters or some have been painting for a while and some mm -hmm. semi-professionals and then um, doing a workshop and well terry would do the same thing right and then seeing the results at the end of each each artist's uh, uh composition and, and how they finish it is really quite uh, quite amazing yeah did you, um, when you do the workshops, uh, do you usually like provide um, like one piece of art that everyone's doing together or do they bring yeah. their own art? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I do. We just do one image. It's easier that way to, to you know, go between sure. students and give them help and, and uh, where everyone's going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, that's been my way of doing it. Anyhow, um, some other people do all kinds of things at, at once at the workshop, but it's a little easier to keep track of what everybody's doing when you're just doing one image. And I, yeah. I provide the image mm -hmm. and uh, you know, provide the canvas and then, and then the galleries provide the, the space, et cetera, to go on. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'll have to keep my eye open. That would be, uh, that would be something fun for me to do actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'd, be, it'd be neat to come and, and, and I, I, love, I love learning from other artists and, yeah. Um, even if it's not, even if it's not your style or your technique or whatever, I find that there's always something that you can, you know, take away from it that then moves over definitely. to your work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, you know, it, like when we're doing the stampede, you go around and look at all the work and, and uh, it's pretty amazing all the different uh, way that people uh, do their paintings or sculpting or whatever. And uh, really is a lot of talent out there that uh, people just maybe not aware of. Yeah, and it it you always pick up something that uh, even after painting this many years, you you still learn. Every every composition is different, and right. they all have to. You have to pay attention to what you're doing, and you pick up some stuff that uh, you've utilized before, and you sometimes you learn something new. Right. Yeah. Do you um. Do you find like do you follow a lot of artists like do you know do you do you browse around and see other people's work and stuff like that much or? Yeah, I do. I um, most, probably mostly once artists that I that I know. Okay. Um, you know, again, uh, going back to some of the wildlife uh, artists, 
and what they're doing, et cetera. I remember that uh, Terry, uh, when he was doing his wildlife still, and the wife, his wife at that time was trying to get him to do other stuff because of the, of the uh, you know, the bit of a dive they took with wildlife. Right. And he just wouldn't. He just couldn't change. <laughs> and it's one of those things that you sometimes, as an artist, you're, you're kind of pigeonholed in, in a certain way. Mm -hmm. that this is what you do. And when you try to do something different, you started getting criticism like, what, what's the matter with him? What the heck is he doing now? You know, where is he doing stuff? <laughs> right. And, yeah, you really do get that. Yeah, I think it's like that in, in any anything and, artistic, right? I mean, if you think yeah. about like musicians, I mean, yeah. how many, how many, you know, whoever you follow, whatever genre it is you follow, you know, their first album, everybody loves it. And then by the time they're third or fourth, they're trying to do something that yeah. is different and everybody yeah. hates yeah. it, right? Sometimes yeah. you gotta wonder if you should paint under a different name. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Do all your flowers. And see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Just it would be, yeah. Yeah. It would be. yeah, if it gains traction or... Yeah, I remember one year I did a, a, a sort of an abstract piece and Rita thought, oh, well, this is ridiculous. You, you can't... <laughs> and that's why I thought, well, I could do it under a different name. You know, right, right. So. Something for fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get the yeah. competition for some of the abstract people. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 That would be very, that would be very interesting. But yeah, yeah I, I can see for sure that um, it's got to be really hard if you're pigeonholed and popular in, yeah. in, in one subject trying to, to do something different. Yeah. 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 One, one thing that was really different for, for me was I, I've uh, illustrated four children's books. And so yeah. that was a whole different route of uh, trying to put work together for, uh, for these uh, books. Mm -hmm. And it, um, you know, I'm not actually a person that paints a lot of people or portraits and not that direction, but it, one of the, they did force me to do a little bit of, um, of work that I ordinarily don't do, but they, they went very well. Yeah, I was, I, was, um, I was surprised when I was browsing through your website um, to see them in there. So when did yeah. you do these? Was this a while back? Or? Oh, these, these go back a ways now. I think probably the first one that Milton Alphabet was probably, oh, 10 plus, no, probably more than 15 years ago. Right. And uh, we did it with an author, the same author, um, and she would do the text and I would do the, uh, the work, the images. Right. But in some of them, like in a Mountain Alphabet, for instance, there's a one line that she wrote and I do like a whole painting which took me days <laughs> so well, that's, that's, what I, yeah. and, that's what i was wondering was yeah. um you know clearly a, a book has a lot of <laughs> even a kid's book it has a lot of pages in it so that's a lot yeah, of art exactly. yeah. yeah well the, the the mountain alphabet uh we did uh, of course 24 images mm -hmm. and i had they were all 16 by 20 and i had four months to do them because they were on, on a deadline mm -hmm. so Basically, I would uh, start painting on one. I'd lay out the next composition, and I'd just go from all the way to A to B to C, and uh, did a road trip to gather a lot of uh, um, reference material from the mountains, from uh, the Rockies, and eventually got them done. And like I say, in four months or so, mm -hmm. and uh, they came out, and it's been one of the best sellers they've had for for quite a number of years I still bet. didn't really check from them so that was good <laughs> <laughs> that is really good yeah. I was, that's what I was going to ask you but so when when you did the paintings um yeah. that were inside the book did you also have those like as originals that you would sell or were they yeah, yeah. okay okay we, a lot of those actually we gave uh, as far as uh, to fundraising events for different charities oh, um, that's wonderful we, we, for instance we did a Craig Simpson um charity drive up in Edmonton and mm -hmm. uh so we donate an original every year and, and uh, they would use it to raise money for back injuries in that case. Oh, that but is so good. In some hospitals and all kinds of different uh, organizations. Right. So it, <clears throat> there was one gentleman with the Mountain Alphabet. Every time we sent one up to Edmonton, he'd, he'd be the one that, he, I think he had six or seven of them that he purchased. <laughs> Just kept rolling with the Mountain Alphabet the originals. But they were interesting to do. Yeah, and the Cool Woods was actually, uh, the authors were two sisters from uh, Ontario. And so it had to do with the, um, 
with the northern hemisphere, with the uh, the uh, forests around the globe, uh, everything from you know to BC to Russia to the whole whole uh, all the continents. Right. Uh, and so they provided uh, the information, and I had to go to that to try and do the compositions to match it. And so you'd have a bunch of different things in there as well that related to the boreal forest. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, so it was really a little different experience doing that one too. Oh yeah, these are beautiful. I, I didn't see the, um, that you can sort of do a quick, a quick browse and, uh, yeah. you know, just to have a look here, but this gives you a good idea of, of what's Some of the it. stuff that was in them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, there's a... Yeah, and it may, enabled me to learn a lot more about the boreal forest. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. And there's a lot of work in here. Like, this, yeah, it this, is. you know, for, for like, look at all of the, like the detail and, you know, there's so much going on, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and they were a little bit bigger. I think they were like uh, 24 by 30s or something, some of those paintings. And we did a whole pile of black and white sketches for them too. Wow. So they, yeah. And then the, the um, mountain alphabet, the uh, BC, their schools, uh, they bought a uh, edition that's specifically printed for for the elementary schools in BC and 50,000 copies and they had it all in um, you know everything put in the inside cover as to what they were for so there was a quite a nice little deal about giving every kid uh, elementary school kid in BC of one of these books a copy of the book wow nice. that, yeah. that's that's really cool yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice when, um, like, you get to, I mean, it must be a nice break as well for, for you to do something that is going to a different audience. Kids get to yeah. see it. They yeah. enjoy it, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's really fun. Doing it, you know, doing shows like even, say, at the Stampede, people would come by every once in a while, bring a book, and want it, want it signed. Oh, so, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I see these are, these are all available on the, the Penguin Random House yep. Canada website. Yep. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Wow, that's really exciting. Yeah, and it, yeah. it does, it also, um, like what you were saying before um, about like some of the, um, like the little reminders, like that will, someone will buy a smaller one and then yep. they'll, love, they'll love your work and then they're familiar with you. So then they'll follow you. And then maybe when a bigger piece comes out, you know, that'll be something that they'll, they'll want to get from you. So oh, sure, yeah. So it's these a books, small piece like that is always a good starting point for, for a lot of people. Right. And it's affordable. And then, yeah, a lot of times it drives them to, to uh, looking at some larger pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, um, so yeah, it's, it's been pretty amazing, really. If you think about it, all this place that some of my originals have gone to, everywhere from Australia to Dubai to all over the States. And so really? it's been incredible, yeah. Wow. And, and so the stuff that, I mean, obviously there, there, you know, you've been doing this a long time, so there's a lot of art everywhere, but um, like Dubai and stuff like that, do you find that like you end up shipping all of your work out there or? Yep. or oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And we shipped the one piece about three years ago to Australia out in the Outback somewhere. It took, took over a month to, to, oh fed, to get it there. <laughs> and it's expensive. It's expensive to it ship is. to Australia, right? Well, it wasn't cheap, that's for sure. Oh, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, I had I had an Australian buy a piece for me last year at the Stampede, and um, he wanted me to ship it, and oh my God, it was almost like five hundred dollars. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, easy. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and the only, you know, I do ship a lot of pieces to the U.S. too, but mm -hmm. the the only play, only outfit you can really ship it with is FedEx. Right. Uh, none of the other couriers uh, sent. Are, are able to do it into the states as far as art goes. Really? So you put, you know, you get your address already, and you you get the forms to fill out, and you want to set it by ground because it goes to, let's say, Montana. Right. The truck wouldn't go too long to get down there, and then you mm -hmm. find out that FedEx doesn't do the ground; they do it by air. Uh, oh. They give you the ground price, but it still goes by air. So from Calgary it goes down to Atlanta or someplace and then back up to Montana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they have their hubs and I guess that's how they deal with the shipping. But, yeah. yeah. And fortunately we haven't had too many incidents. So we had a couple of cases where still things were ruined, but um, if right. you package it right, everything goes pretty smoothly. So not yeah. too bad. Yeah. And, and do you do that yourself or is that 
yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, though, it's we used to do that ourselves to the states too, but now that's changed um, because of the uh, different administration. The crossing the border has become a lot more difficult for us. Right. Now you've got to have your proper, proper paperwork, and you've got to, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's, and you have to have, in most cases, an American broker to do it. Right. You can't do it without a broker now, and you have to have all these different forms, and so your cost just to get your work down there as far as doing a show, right? Um, it's quite a substantial amount to begin with. And, you know, I used to go down there all the time. I just have to fill out my paperwork, a couple of forms, and you'd be across the board and no problem. Right. But it's changed a lot in the last few years. So wow. last time I did that to Montana, it took me two days to get it <laughs> to get across the board. <laughs> so does that, does that um, stop you from doing as many shows down there? No, no, we, I, I don't do as many down there as we used to. You know, right. I probably just do a couple a year, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, other places, we usually ship to clients. So shipping by to clients is not a big problem, but carrying stuff across the border yourself can be an issue. Right. So, yeah, wow. there was a, um, yeah, there was an artist I just talked to recently. He was stuck at the board for nine hours trying to explain what he was doing, taking artwork down to a client. Oh my that God! Easier to ship it than to take it. So, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never thought about that. You know, I'd, yeah. yeah, I'd often thought that if there was a big piece and it was a lot of money, that I might just drive it down myself. But that makes sense, then, right? Yeah, don't, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so, who, who prompted you to do, um, to do your art? How did you start? Um, like when, like way back when? Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, it was it was in high school. Um, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, um, God, if I think about it, it was probably you know I was in high school. I was seventeen. I was into it was the nineteen eighties. So you know uh-huh. I was into I was into all of the music, you know the just just whatever was popular you know back yeah. then like Rush and Kiss and you know whatever else it was. And it was the album covers that actually got me really excited. There was one yeah. of a. Yeah of a big owl on this rush album cover and i remember looking at that and like being blown away with how it was created and then i wanted to like basically copy back then it was copy 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 right yeah yeah so I, yeah and then of course um uh bateman my dad had like some of his books uh-huh. and so i would flip through there and you know when you're when you're a teenager it, it seems impossible that someone could actually paint something yeah, like exactly. that mm-hmm. yeah yeah, and it was just as, as as much as you were talking about the, um, what did you call them? Like the, um, what you, when you were doing them in high school, the, the you said they were just little sketches, uh, the little timelines. Timelines. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Do you still have your timelines? No, I don't no. know what happened to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I have I have one painting from when I was a teenager um that's framed um, but it's it's um, it, it's yellowed because I'm sure the you know the paper I got was like a dollar. You know, a oh, yeah. paper or something like that. But yeah, it's fascinating to to look at it and you know, just think how long ago and how little I knew and I was Oh yeah. 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 Tracing yeah, I've, got, I've got pieces of that I've done like you know when I first started and uh, on on the computers and uh, mm-hmm. you look back every once in a while and go, Wow, you know, how much the style has changed and how much you've learned over the years and how to make it a little easier for yourself. But it really is incredible. Yeah, it, it really, um, even just uh, the style changing every once in a while, <clears throat> excuse me, mm-hmm. um, it's something that you don't really pay attention to, but you notice if you look back a year or whatever, that how much you've uh, come and how much you've accomplished as far as getting a little bit more yeah. uh, more work. Excuse me, I'll take a little sip here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll, I'll, do, the, I'll do the same. I, um, do you, uh, do you, when you look back on your work like that, how do you, how do you feel like, do you feel, um, like a sense of nostalgia or do you like cringe at like, uh, you know, maybe some of them, <laughs> yeah, some of them I cringe at and some of them, uh, you know, are interesting yeah. and yeah. some of them I've actually taken and, uh, have reworked them or redone another composition based on that particular original and seeing how different it was then and having the same composition doing it now 
right and the, the whole difference and it, mm -hmm. it really is interesting but well, it being self-taught um you know i never picked up anything from anybody else as far as uh influence uh, i mm -hmm. certainly have looked at some artists like andrew wright was one of my favorites and um colville and uh oh um, what's his name um Mary Pratt, her name, I mean, she does some amazing still lives. Oh. And Ken Danby was another one. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember seeing a painting of the uh, goaltender, hockey, ice hockey? Uh, I think it was called um, At the Crease. Yeah, you should look that up. Sure. Uh, Ken Danby did some beautiful work. He's from uh, Ontario. Here, and, uh, pull it up here. Yeah, he's passed away as well, but... Uh, Mm. That was one of the influences on the realism of the landscapes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. know this one 100%. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it was oh, basically wow. people like that that uh, I looked at, you know, their work and uh, what they were accomplishing. And like you say, when you're, you know, when you're just starting out, you say, how, how did they do that? <laughs> right, right. Then, yeah, I can imagine. Maybe, like if I was yeah. trying to figure this out as a teenager, like just looking at the net in this yeah. would yeah. have would have you know blown me away. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a great piece, and he's had some beautiful landscapes. Wow. And then Alex Colville, of course, was a little bit more on the impressionist side, but he had some great work as well. And so some great Canadian artists. Oh yeah, you know it's funny. Every artist that I talk to. Um, you know, they have some of the same influences, but then they also have uh, different, you know, different artists that I haven't heard of before, or yeah, right. I've only seen yeah. a couple pieces of their work. And, you know, then you end up going down this rabbit hole of looking at all of their work. And yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing it how many. Did you, did you know Ken? No, no. Okay. It was just, just the work. Yeah, just the work. That, you know, yeah. 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 Okay. Like I say, the, the, um, did not meet any of them, but did follow their work. And uh, the only people that were, um, that had a lot of effect on me as far as work was, was during the wildlife era, because mm -hmm. I knew so many of the artists, you know, from John C. Lester to, of course, Terry Isaac, and uh, a lot of them that, like Carl Brenders, for instance. Um, so I knew right. all these guys. Yeah. And uh, they had a, a certain amount of influence on giving you a little bit more uh, confidence in what you're doing mm -hmm. and getting a little bit of criticism and critique on your work um, right. it, it does help especially yeah. when you're self-taught it's a little bit longer road to travel mm -hmm. <laughs> you like when, you, when you say you were self-taught like um did did you study with anyone sort of like i did with terry or it, it was it was all you it was all me wow yeah. never, stu never studied with anyone and um Mm -hmm. I think it, it enabled me to do develop a style that is my own and that people recognize. I find I, sometimes, yeah. that, you know, uh, if you get too much influence from certain artists or certain direction that you're going, you're going to paint like them. Right. And it's difficult to try and get your own style. And that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of young artists that, that follow me and then I follow them back, um, right now it, it just seems to be copying a photograph yeah. so all of the yeah. work looks exactly the same yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so well, i keep if you, look at, if you look at the big thing right now and probably what the last four or five years now has been uh, wildly colored animals mm. that's become the, the big thing if you look at any gallery yeah. site or any of the work a lot of people are doing it's all these weird colored animals and they yeah. seem to do well enough but you know again it's they all look the same one after the other right you know? <laughs> yeah and at, at some point the you know the, the market or the people that are interested in those those will be saturated you know people yeah. will, you know only so many people want a blue horse and um yeah. right and then or a little grizzly bear or whatever they're painting yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's very interesting so yeah, it's got to be difficult. It's got to be difficult to find your own your own style. But I like I like that because you um, like what you said. You without training with anyone, without figuring it, like you figured out all of the the issues yourself, right? You know, yeah. you know how how to get something to look a certain way. So by doing that, you weren't basically copying anyone. You 
it took your long, own thing. Yeah, it yeah. took longer, but you developed your own style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, and it's, you know, a little bit more of an accomplishment that way. And like I mm -hmm. say, it would take a little bit longer. I mean, you can learn things, the basics, um, composition and color mixing and all that sure, sort of stuff. Sure. But really, when it comes down to putting brush to canvas, uh, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. And it's how you are able to develop uh, from what's in your head to go to your hand, to go to the brush, to the canvas. And that's <laughs> the technical yeah. thing that you can accomplish. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I, I wonder too, um, when, when new artists now are, are creating their work, because there is that instant access to photography or, you know, things yep. on the internet or whatever. Um, yeah. It, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here, but you know, just basically taking what you see and copying it, there's not really a chance for you to grow and understand how, a, you know, how a brush puts down yeah. paint and a, what a stroke yeah. can do for you. And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, I like I, I take photos and I work from my photos for reference, right. but they're strictly reference. And then you're, you know, there are a lot of things that you do on, on, on your canvas that are guided by what you want, uh, mm -hmm. how, how you want the uh, result to be. Yeah. So basically the photo is just a, a, as a reference so you're not copying it, you're kind of improving on it. Yes. And it, it makes it a little easier. Just just think about what some of the old, old masters would have done with a camera. <laughs> like oh this to a chapel. You know, yeah, like that. that would be overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, so I wanted to ask you, Andrew, so I, um, before I was doing this, I asked a few of the, my followers if, if they had any questions for you or whatever. Um, and one of the questions that came up, which I thought was kind of interesting, was regarding galleries and stuff like that. Because oh yeah. you're yeah. Um, you're in quite a few different galleries. I'll, I'll bring that up and share it on here. Um, it's up here. Doo -doo. So you're in quite a few different galleries. Um, obviously, uh, you know, different galleries, different rules and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, a couple of the questions were um, when other artists had approached galleries, that there was a lot of pushback for them to only be in, you know, one or two galleries and not to sell their work online or at other shows like the Stampede or anything else. Do you yeah. ever run into that or? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, kind of a double-edged sword there for, for artists as far as dealing with the galleries, because of course, galleries take a certain uh, commission. And mm -hmm. as you all know, uh, some of them can be pretty steep. Um, mm -hmm. There are a number of different things that I can say about that. Um, doing your, we, when we do our shows ourselves, they're generally not done in a place where we, where we have a gallery. So oh. there's no conflict. Um, so if I'm, let's say I want to do a show in Invermere, mm -hmm. and I have a gallery there, Artem Gallery that carries the work, I, right. I wouldn't want to do it because it's conflicting with what they're doing. Oh, and very we do, Yeah, when we do our own show, uh, mm -hmm. the price for the piece is exactly the same as it would be at the gallery. Right. Um, if we start undercutting them, like giving people a you know, big break on it, mm -hmm. uh, it'll, it'll undermine what the galleries are doing for you. Right. Now they have, you know, we, have, we certainly have a client list, but the galleries have even more so. Mm -hmm. So basically they're using, uh, their knowledge of clients and um, their advertising of your work, their promoting your work. So yes, they do deserve to get the commission and right. some, as much as you think they should. <laughs> but, you know, they are able to take your work and reach people that you don't have a handle on, that mm -hmm. you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so it is, um, the other thing too is that artists a lot of times complain, well, they take such a big commission, you know, I can sell it myself. I can, yeah, okay. Well, try and sell it by yourself uh, for a while and see how that works out. Mm -hmm. So let's say you go do a show and you spend two, three thousand dollars of your money to promote the show and put it on and you sell not much. Right. Um, so you're mm -hmm. in the hole. Now yeah. with a gallery, granted you pay a, a commission, mm -hmm. but when that painting sells, uh, all you have to do is ship it to them and you get a check back and, and you haven't had to put any expense <laughs> off it. Right, I so agree with you, yeah. 
Yeah, so it, it is uh, it is something that artists have to make up their minds about whether they want to do it. Right. Um, the other problem right now, of course, with everything that's going on, and uh, most artists have their stable artists. So they always try and get, uh, they don't want to have two artists that do exactly the same sort of stuff. So a lot of artists will be rejected by galleries because the gallery maybe already carries somebody that uh, their work is similar to what you're right. trying to to ask them to to uh, to show. Right. So it um, it is it is something that I've been okay with. Um, many many years we've done it ourselves, and probably I started with um, galleries about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's worked out quite well. Yeah. And it still does uh, because right now, for instance, with the stampede not open and uh, other other things that have closed down, like you know, Spruce Meadows where we used to do the show every, every September. Uh, yeah. So you have to kind of depend now more on the galleries, and fortunately, it's been not too bad. Well, and it's interesting too that you've got such a good relationship with those galleries, right? So that you yeah, know, I, you I, I didn't even think, I didn't even really think about it, but. Um, yeah, it, it absolutely makes sense that, um, you know, if, if you know, you, you've got a gallery here in, in Whistler, for instance. Yeah. Um, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't go and set up a shop no. at a show there and, no. and literally compete with that gallery. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that's the other reason, uh, because I am dealing with galleries. I don't undercut them. Uh, I've heard horror stories with artists that say, well, I, I'll give it to you for the same price, you know, with the gallery's uh, part taken off. So you right. saw it. 60% or 50% and mm -hmm. then the gallery finds out and the next thing you know you're out on your butt you <laughs> work anymore. exactly exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm only at one gallery uh, it's the, the Grant Berg Gallery in um, Kananaskis and oh, yeah. um, so I, I had a, a, a big bison that I had painted out there and someone contacted me online and said that they were interested in it so I drove mm -hmm. out to the gallery got the piece um, they were going to take it for the weekend and try it out, basically. Um, yep. Dropped it off there, and um, they they purchased it. And um, so I contacted the gallery owner, and I said, you know, they've purchased it. You know, how do I, you know, what do I do? What do I give you your, yep. how do I give you your 50% or or whatever it is, right? And um, he was he was very grateful that, um, yeah. that I had done that. And he had said he's had people before just pull the painting and sell it themselves. And I couldn't yeah. believe, I couldn't believe yeah. that. Like, I mean, your work is out there, they're renting this space. And exactly. anyone that comes into that gallery is getting to see your work. It's it's something that it, you wouldn't be able to do yourself. So right. there, they yeah. have a lot, of, a lot of clients that have exposure to your stuff and they may not buy at that particular time, but mm -hmm. over, over a period of years or whatever, uh, they will eventually come back. And right. that's exactly the perfect thing you did there with, was asking the gallery because if they would have found out that you did sell it, you might not have a gallery. <laughs> well, exactly. Exactly. Why would they want to keep me if yeah. I'm if I'm doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of pitfalls out there, so you really got to watch your step. And <laughs> yeah. my wife and my daughter really keep me in line about uh, you know because it's your reputation that you're trying to to uphold and and deal fairly with clients and galleries and everything else. Yeah. 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 I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say, just like you were saying that, you know, there's a lot of complaints about what a gallery takes, right. Whether it's 40 yeah. or 50 or, or, mm -hmm. or whatever, but yeah, I do agree with you once. I mean, it, it's difficult if um, you know, you're selling a piece for 3000 and then you only get 1500. Um, yeah. It's difficult maybe financially if you're trying to figure out the best way to be able to earn a living off of it. But you know that's you know maybe you raise your prices or yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah so um like I say we, you know uh, place especially like the stampede uh, because you're not dealing with a gallery people will come to me and say well do you think you know maybe you could give me a thirty percent off because of a gallery blah 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 oh and, hey, sorry I can't do that because I'm to cut my galleries and right. and so. Yeah, you you pretty well have to stand your ground in that. You know. Yeah. So when people will ask you for like a thirty percent off, because would that be a piece that's in the gallery or one that's not, but they want a discount because if it was in the gallery, they want a discount of one that you have happened to have there. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And the other thing is a lot of times people will come to the booth and you've got 30 pieces hung up and they say, well, do you have anything else? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else do you have you got? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So then you just direct them to the galleries. Yeah. Yeah. I know that um, uh, Shannon Ford, who's also been at the, the Stampede, yep. Um, yeah, she's got an interesting relationship with her galleries where she promotes the galleries in her booth as well. Yep. So she gives out their cards and, and all yeah. of that. So, yeah, I, I think in, it's individual just finding a way to work with them so that, you know, it's, it's fair for both of you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, and I wanted to ask you too, you mentioned Stampede, or not Stampede, um, Spruce Meadows. Last year, um, I ran into you at Spruce Meadows. You had rented one of those tents, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was an interesting, so um, so generally at, at the Spruce Meadows, there's the big buildings where you can rent an individual booth, or yeah. they have these little pavilions, which are yeah. sort of self-enclosed, and I think you were sharing with one other artist. Yeah, when I we, there. yeah I think last year we did it with, with um, uh, one artist, but we used to do it with three. Okay. So it, it kind of divides up the cost of doing it, and mm -hmm. uh, it works out quite well. You know? Yeah. Did you find that you got, um, like, a, did you get foot traffic and stuff like that? People still came in, even well, though yeah. you were by yourself? Yeah. 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 It, it, it works out quite well. Um, and, you know, Spoochman is a great place to go to in, in September where everything is, uh, it's a big, big show. And you get people from all over the world at, yeah. at that time, at just like the Stampede. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So they had to cancel as well. So we'll see if they happen to have a Christmas market this year, because that's the other issue that's coming up as right. far as what can be done come mm. October, November, and December. Are you looking at doing that right now? No, no, not, not at the moment. Okay. Yeah, maybe, next, maybe next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's hard with COVID, right? Because we got to be careful. Um, yeah. Got to be careful about ourselves, right? Because we're, we're yeah. meeting a lot of people and, um, well, not shaking a lot of hands, but so we, we have a show that, that we're doing um, in... Uh, I'll pull up the information here and, and uh, I'm going to put this all over social media as, as well. Once, once we get to, but near the end of August, we're going to be doing a show um, with Paul Van Ginkle. Um, yep. Yeah. Adam and Cecile, I'll be, I'll put all of that information in the show notes. It's August okay. 28th to the 31st. Yeah. Um, right. But that will be interesting. That'll be the first show that um, we'll have, we'll have, at least that I'll have done with COVID. Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, maintaining that social distance and, um, you know, It'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be. Have you done a show <laughs> at all since then? Uh, yeah, we've like it, we did the gallery in, in Invermere Art, and we did a show there. Okay, how and was that? We coming up, it was good. Was Lots it? of people. It was amazing. Yeah, the the amount of people that came to that, and that was just what uh, a couple weekends ago. Okay. And uh, it, all people from Alberta, of course, that go out there, mm -hmm. and couldn't believe the the traffic heading out that direction. But anyhow, the other one that we're doing is in Canmore at the end of August, or sorry, the end of uh, July. Mm -hmm. uh, John Einerson and Brent Hayton and uh, a few other people, Neil Hamlin, mm -hmm. uh, will be at the, oh, oh, I can't remember the name of the hotel, it's all on Facebook anyhow. Okay. Um, so we're doing that one, and then I'm going to Maple Creek in <laughs> the wow. middle of August. Oh my God, oh. Little, wow. little community, they have about 5,000 people sure. here. And there's a, small gallery and yep. uh, this will be the fourth time I go up there. It's just nice nice to get away from and uh, see some other part of Saskatchewan. Yeah. 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 So oh, that's, the, that's the broken spoke? Yeah. Yeah. Right. August 14th to 15th? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's always nice. Yeah. So well, anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm um, we we're at we're at an hour and fifteen minutes, so you know I oh, want to wow. thank thank I want to thank you for your time. I'll just no turn problem. off I'll turn off my share here so we can see you and yeah thank you again for for spending this time with me and and the listeners and um, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing you in August and I'll uh, be too. Yeah. yeah I'll put um, I'll get all of your uh, your contact information and um, all of the things that you're working on right now I'll link to those in in the show notes. Um, okay. you know, with like the little reminders and all of that. 
And um, yeah, it's been it's been an honor. I uh, I love your work, and um, you know I've known you for so long, and I think this is probably the longest I've ever had a chance to speak to you because at the shows it's so quick, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We just sort of say hi and move on. So thank you so much. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, Very we'll uh, yeah we'll see you soon and take care. Soon. Okay. Okay. Thank see you. you later. Yeah. Bye.